So the cerebral hemispheres co cover a lot of other stuff that's contained within the brain. So you can't see here the midbrain or the dynkephalon, which I showed you. Uh, but there's also other things contained with it, other structures in the brain which we need to know about. So I'll just remove the cerebral hemispheres. So what we're looking at now um, is some of the stuff that's contained within the hemispheres. So I'll just show you what I did here. So we're looking laterally at the brain, we've got the cerebral hemispheres, we've got our cerebellum, and we can see the medulla and the pons from this lateral view. So I'll remove the left cerebral hemisphere and we've got these structures that are contained within it. So you can see that the hemisphere was here and I've removed it and we're looking at these structures inside the brain. So I'll get rid of that one as well. So I'll just show you some familiar structures. So you can see the thalamus the th on either side, so the thalami. Um, you can see the hypothalamus and if I remove the cerebellum you can see the midbrain with the colliculi sitting on the tectum. So what we've got inside, um, inside contained in, in the hemispheres are basal ganglia, the limbic system, and ventricles. So we'll take a look at the basal ganglia first. So we'll actually use this model with the with one half of the cerebral hemisphere because it's a bit easier to orientate yourself when you can see the uh, the hemisphere. So the basal ganglia. Um, the term is actually a bit of a misnomer. It should be basal nuclei because these are collections of cell bodies which are contained in white matter in the central nervous system. So they should be called nuclei rather than ganglia, but they're called basal ganglia, so we'll stick with that. So you've got um, three parts to the basal ganglia. You've got the caudate nucleus, which is this, this structure here. So you can see here is the, it's got three parts. It's got a head, um, a body, and a tail which winds around like this. So that's the chordate nucleus and then outside the chordate nucleus you've got the putamen. So this is this spherical, uh, not spherical, this round curved structure. So this is the putamen and just sitting medially to the putamen you've got the globus pallidus. So I've just faded away the various structures, so you can see the globus pallidus, which has a internal and external, or lateral and medial part. So the globus pallidus is these two structures, the lateral and the medial um, globus pallidus. So these structures sit medial to the um, putamen. So collectively, the globus pallidus and the putamen are referred to as the lentiform nucleus or the lenticular nucleus and the caudate nucleus which is this structure with the head the body and the tail that winds round um, combined with the putamen is called the neostriatum so you've got these structures on both sides so if I just rotate around to the other side you can see the C-shaped caudate nucleus so you can see its head the body and the tail um, you can see the putamen sitting laterally and you can see the um, globus pallidus with its lateral and medial parts sitting medially. And from this um, anterior view which we're now looking at you can see our um, structures from the diencephalon, the um, thalami. So these sit um, medial to the globus pallidus. There are also two other components of the basal ganglia, which, uh, which are the um, subthalamic nucleus and the substantia nigra, which I'll show you in another tutorial. So the next part is the limbic system, which is quite complicated because it's not actually an anatomically distinct um, set of structures. Um, so it's not very clearly defined. It's more a collection of functionally related nuclei um, and cortical areas. But there are a few structures that are worth pointing out. So we've got the the hippocampus here, um, or the hippocampal formation, and it's um, this structure is important in the formation of memory. So this structure actually sits in the uh, medially in the temporal lobe. So if I just rotate around, you can see the temporal lobe here, and it sits within the medial aspect of the temporal lobe. Um, and then you've got the fornix. So if I just remove the 
basal ganglia and the lateral ventricle. Um, so the fornix runs up like this, you can see it here. Um, and you've got the mammillary bodies down here. Um, and if we follow the chordate nucleus around, so follow the head, the body and the tail, at the end we've got this um, walnut shaped structure which is called the amygdala or amygdaloid body. So this is often um, included by definition with the basal ganglia but it's um, part of the limbic system. So those are just a few parts of the limbic system which are worth pointing out but it's a lot more complicated than that. So finally we've got the ventricles. So the ventricles are these um, grey parts of this model so you've probably been wondering what these are but these um, so I'll just rotate the model. These are the uh, the vent ventricles, um, and the ventricles are developed from the neural tube and are remnants of this um, this uh, the neural tube, and they're filled with cerebrospinal fluid, which is a colourless fluid um, which protects and nourishes the neural tissue. So I've just switched to a diagram of the ventricular system of the brain. So you can see there's these C-shaped um, ventricles on either side. So these are the lateral ventricles. Um, you've got one on either side and they connect to a third ventricle which sits in the midline and they're connected to the third ventricle by interventricular foramen or foramina, plural. So these little bits on either side. Um, and then the, in the third ventricle connects to the fourth ventricle which lies within the pons. So you can see the ventricles in relation to these other structures and you can see the, the third ventricle in the midline and its wall, the walls of the third ventricle are made um, are supported by the thalamus, they're made up by the th walls of the thalamus and the cerebral aqueduct runs within the midbrain to connect to the fourth ventricle. So if I just rotate this around remove the cerebellum. So you can see the fourth ventricle here sitting um, within the pons. So if I just fade out the brain slowly you can see the so you can see the cerebral aqueduct connecting the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle um, like that. So that's the those are the parts of the brain. So we've gone through the brain stem, the cerebellum, the diencephalon, which consists of the thalamus, hypothalamus, pineal body. We've talked about the cerebral hemispheres and the um, cerebral cortex. We've talked about the lobes, and we've talked about the stuff that's contained inside the hemispheres, so the basal ganglia, the limbic system, and the ventricles. So I hope that's given you a sort of three-dimensional idea of how the parts of the brain relate to each other.